Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanics and we have come to look at this Peugeot uh, partner. It's got an NOX issue. So we've literally just put the jack underneath it now and we're going to get it an axle stand under there. So I'm just looking underneath to, to actually locate the sensor. There it is right there. It's got that little wiring loom going off it into a box there. It's got its own ECU on it. We're just going to follow the exhaust line back. You can see you've got the DPF pressure lines there. And just up the front of the exhaust here, we have the AdBlue injector there. Now, depending on what sort of different fault you have on the NOx issues, there can be different causes for it. So we've located the NOx sensors. Now we're going to get our diagnostic machine, plug it in and see what fault we've actually got. So this van has done 152,000. Had a few complaints about the customer. He's complained about this van. It's he said he's not very happy with what he's saying. I didn't realize it's done so much mileage. Though he was complaining that the cam belt uh, recently snapped. Obviously, they're due at one hundred and twenty thousand maximum. That is not due at, but due before that. And obviously, he hasn't changed the cam belt, so that is going to be an expensive fix if it snaps. Okay, we'll get the diagnostic system started up, and we can run an auto scan there. Sure, we've got the ignition on. Yep. Just in an OBD code read at the minute. Lost communication with the NOx sensor. Get that to focus there. U029D. Lost communication with the NOx sensor again. So both the same code pending and current. So, a lot of mix-ups that we get with um, diagnosis is like this is when a customer calls us, um, yeah, I've got a problem with the knock sensor. I said, yeah, what is it? Oh, there's a fault with the knock sensor. They don't give you any more information. Is it lost communication? Is it NOx exceedance? Uh, is it, you know, uh, there's all sorts of different codes and all sorts of different types of faults you can get. So... It's good to actually read what the fault is. So it's lost communication, so we know there's an electrical issue. It's not a NOx exceedance code, which would be, um, you know, possibly there's a few different reasons for NOx exceedance. So your NOx is too high. Could be the AdBlue injector is faulty or the um, DEF fluid is getting past the, the actual um, filter and getting onto the NOx sensor and contact contaminating it but in this sense we're gonna go underneath the van now and see if we can see if there is power to the NOx sensor so we're having a bit of trouble trying to connect um you know full diagnosis uh, on this it's not really i think there's an issue with this um plug over here it's already been pulled out of the mount where it should be uh, but all we can sort of get to connect on this is the standard obd um, diagnostic system so on our device here we should be getting the green light here for the car symbol but just playing around with this plug we can't seem to get it to connect Make sure so these wires aren't loose or anything So we're going to stick our pin into the wiring loom here of the NOx and we're going to see if we're getting voltage. So we're going to test the main one first. Should we get 12 volts? Let's have a look. Yep, we've got 12 volts on that. Next one is the canvas, and we should be getting around about 2 volts in that. Yeah, and the next canvas, yes. So just here we just removed the little 10mm uh, 
bolt. Now we're gonna just unplug the sensor, pulling on the tab here. We've got that unplugged. So this is the harness from the vehicle. Okay, so we've got this disconnected from the actual little plastic case in here now. Just a little few clips that you pull off. And we have a 22 millimeter crow's foot spanner. I'll show you what that looks like in case you don't know. 22 mil crow's foot spanner. We're just gonna get that over there. Just helps helps it grip a little bit better than an ordinary spanner. I'm just gonna try and get this open. So we've got the old unit out. There it is. Purchase it from Paris. It's got its own little um, ECU there built onto it. Now we shall get the new sensor plugged in. And it's already got some lubrication there already. Comes with it. So the first thing to do would be to get the sensor in and it'll slot just right in there. As long as you get it in the right position and then just tighten it up by hand first. So there we have it, one sensor is all plugged in wired in and connected up there so we just got our tools out now we can let the jack down so now we're going to delete the code and so what would happen with the old sensor is once you delete the code and you start the van you wouldn't get the current or permanent fault straight up but you would get a pending code so we'll start the van run it for five minutes and see if any pending codes come back now, I would normally go in and do an all systems scan and see if we can do any adaptions on the new sensor, but we cannot connect to this vehicle for some reason. We can only we can only connect to it via a standard, let me just go back, via the OBD there. We can only go in, go in by this. Okay, yeah. So we're not getting any connection seems to be some sort of fault with this uh, wire and harness maybe so we'll run the vehicle for a couple of minutes now let's do another scan and press ok on that DTCs No fault codes, so it's a good sign there. And so the difference there with pending codes and permanent codes is with a pending code, you can, as soon as you've got a circuit issue, you'll get a pending code, but you won't get any warnings on the dashboard there. And maybe after about 20 minutes, it depends on the vehicle, the pending code will then trigger off a permanent code, which will then trigger off your engine management light but we've not got no pending codes now so it's all good so that's it one Peugeot NOx sensor all sorted out see you next time